Hello everyone, Argzy here. Welcome back to the Canadian Cattle Farmer here in Chilliwack, British Columbia. It's a bittersweet day today. We are going to be saying very, very fond farewell to this wonderful map, this wonderful series and this wonderful farm we have built. It is the very last episode we are going to have here from Chilliwack and it's a little bit sad but I'm also looking forward to where we are going to be heading next. But before we do and before we go for a one last look around the farm and showing to prospective uh, players what they might be getting we're going to do one last little job we do have the swather out and we're going to go and get the grass field just over the newer one we purchased we're going to go and get that mode and ready to be made in some some hay or something like that so we're kind of trying to just help out a little bit with giving whoever comes in and takes the farm over a little bit of a helping hand so we've just uh loaded up with fuel got everything up and topped off we're going to head on over this way and go and get things mowed. But the plan is we'll get that done and then we'll come and take one last look around the farm. Summarise everything, where everything's at, what stage things are at, what we've got in the bins, how much money there is. We're going to clear the debt and just make sure that we leave the farm in a state where someone can come in, take it over and get up and running with it straight away. But let's head on down here and go and get started on some mowing. So edge of the field, get things powered up now of course, maze plus. Let's just double check. I don't think we can put conditioner on there. We do have it with or without conditioner, but that of course is through the swather more than anything else. We're getting that grass nice and well mown. Now this leaves it that whoever comes in can either go through if they want to pick this up and use it for silage, make some silage bales or something like that. They can do that if they want to use it for hay. You can come through and tear it and change it into some hay. So we're kind of leaving it in an open state, but we're kind of taking away what you can do with it. There is the clover field as well, of course, which we'll go and take a look at later, but we're not going to bother mowing that. We're just going to jump in here, crack into a little bit of a time lapse to get this one done for you, and uh, then we'll go and take a look around.
Not sure if there's a right way or a wrong way to do little sections of the field when you get to the last little piece to finish off awkward little triangles as such, but uh, we're doing it this way. And we're just about done. Some nice, neat grass windrows sitting there, which will be ready for the next farmer to come in and get picked up. So we've saved them a little bit of a job there. It's just up to them now whether they want to turn this into silage bales, uh, put down another bunker and pick it up with the forage harvester, make some more silage or uh, potentially turn it into some hay. There's uh, plenty of options while we're here and we'll go and have a look in a minute but the clover field just there over the train tracks that's all ready to go as well. So still a fair bit of work that needs to be done before the end of the season but that is, uh, that is, us for, that is it for us, the last farm work we're going to do here in Chilliwack. We'll get over, get this washed up, parked up, put away, and then we'll go and have a look, one last look, around the farm. I think it's only appropriate that we leave the equipment as clean as we can for the next user. Never nice putting dirty equipment away in the shed. There we go, that's looking much, much tidier. Now this header is too big actually to go in the sheds the way we have them all set up with the equipment that's inside it, so it does sit outside. Uh, there is going to be some more mowing needing to be done of course as I said so I might just leave it attached for now and leave it up to the next person to decide what it is they're going to do. Put that back there and we'll go and get this parked away. So we'll leave that parked there but we're going to go and take a quick look around the sheds at exactly what there is that you're inheriting when you do take the farm on. One of our two semis there that's hooked up to one of the silage trailers. We've got two of the semi trailers there, the silage boss on this side and uh, the silage king. On the other side here, can't remember what this is, the Ortex one, Artex silage trailer. So a couple of good sized silage trailers there, that's really handy when you're running the forage chopper in grass. Uh, we've got the two forage boxes here and they are fantastic for putting the maize silage up into the big harvest store. Obviously with this little side unload into the blower, that pushes that right up in there. Works out really, really well. We've got a big Borgo cultivator there for some field preparation as well as the case speed disc. A speed tool that uh, covers some land and gets through it. We've obviously got the horsepower track that'll pull it, uh, but that does get through things really quickly. Coming to the shed here, grain header for our combine. Uh, we've got our planter set up over on this side. There's our planter. We do have this very, very handy fertilizer caddy, which we did pull behind the planter there. So you can hook that up on the back, and run them in tandem, and cover a whole lot more ground without having to refill. And we've got the solid fertilizer and lime box there for the back of the fertilizer spreader. We've got two balers, obviously the bigger one, the New Holland Big Baler 1290 high density baler which has been a godsend after the experiences here using the little New Holland D1000. Uh, this only does the small bales so be wary if you don't want to have too many bales to handle. Our cedar setup, the big Borgo CD872, it's a fantastic cedar, perfect size for this farm although as some of the fields have become merged and we're getting a little bit bigger could be time to upgrade to something a little bit bigger, or maybe even a second cedar. Who knows? It is up to you. Silage bagger sitting there, the egg bag set bagger sitting there nice and handy, and then we do have the Kabuta fast baler, so that can be used for wrapping silage or anything like that. Uh, carrying on, we're going to have a look at our feed supplies in just a little bit. Let's just uh, head on over this way. We've got a few more trailers parked up in here, just between the silage bunker and the shed. We've got our twin set up for hauling our grains and we do have some grain in the silo we'll go and have a look at we've got our milk tanker there uh, we haven't been using that we've been using the milk cell point getting someone in to come in and take the milk for us which has been very handy uh, auto load bale trailer which has again been another handy piece of equipment to have on the farm we've got the silage blade which we were using obviously to level our silage bunkers uh, the second of our max and uh, our animal trailer there for moving and delivering animals or transferring them around between our different pens uh, the case ripper there, that has been our plough of choice and has done a fantastic job for us. We'll go over and have a look in the main shed in just a second, but just carrying on around this way. Keep your eyes off my pickup, that's mine and that's going with me. Uh, the j and grain cart there, very handy piece of a kit. We've got the conveyor belt to be able to take our maize silage out of the harvest store there. Uh, our truck set up here for feeding the animals. We've got the uh, night 26,000 litre trailer unit and truck unit those both set up there they're detachable and can actually be run independently if you like i was contemplating replacing those two with another one of the big pecan mixers like we have here uh, the big mega mamut mixer of course by pecan because uh, this has a 64,000 liter capacity and you only have to mix into one whereas combined those are only 52 so again it's entirely up to you 
Got the John Deere sitting there, engine still running, we should probably have that turned off, the 4440 which we've used on our blower, we've got the front loader on it, nice and handy for you. And then carrying on around here, this is the last tractor we bought, 8410, great workhorse, it's done a lot of work here feeding the animals. And then the Case A21G wheel loader, I've got a bale spike sitting on that at the moment. Over in the distance you can see our slurry spreader and we've obviously got the slurry pump sitting up there in the uh, slurry bunker. So before we talk about our feed supplies we'll go and check out the rest of the equipment. This is just in front of the main shop here, we've got Tita and V-Rake over there for our hay work. And then here is all of the expensive equipment. Uh, the sprayer, the John Deere sprayer, we've got an under firth gooseneck seed tender, the new to Holland T8 there running the uh, jewels on the front and the tracks on the back. Great tractor, I've really enjoyed using that one. Through here the big workhorse, just sneak in and amounts everything, the uh, 24-25 versatile. That has done a power of work when it's come to field preparation, it's been a great tractor for us. As has the Class Jaguar, that's uh, chewed through some acres of maize as well as grass, getting us enough feed to be able to keep our cattle all happy. And then when we've wanted to do some grain work, the New Holland TR99, I talked about replacing this at some stage, but I've actually grown quite fond of it, and uh, it's probably a really good size, and covers a good amount of land, even though it's not the biggest, it has done us a very good job here. We've still got the mower deck for the uh, for the swather as well. And rounding out the tractors, we've got the Kubota M7, this has been a fantastic tractor, again, really, really useful around here, really good size, again, for a lot of the yard work, and even towing the... The silage boxes uh, and those kind of things are around. It's, um, it's done a great amount of work. It's been fantastic. So moving on to take a look at the feed supplies you're going to be left with. There's 1.2 million litres of maize silage sitting over in those six tubes. So you can pull that out as and when you need it. Uh, we've got just shy of a million litres of grass silage sitting there between the two bunkers. So plenty of supplies to be able to keep your animals well fed. Pop over this way and have a look got our hay in this one, there's 92 240 centimetre hay bales in there and then we've also got the round straw bales in this one, 119 of those at the smaller 125 centimetre size. Add to that we've got some more clover hay sitting here, see the clover hay 8,000 litres per bale and then we've got a whole lot of whole crop silage, 3,500 litres of that and looking over in the distance just through the gap there there is a whole lot more straw that we couldn't fit into our sheds or wouldn't go into the sheds because it was the square bales. So all in all, we've got a heap. And I haven't even talked about the one and a half million litres of maize silage sitting there in the harvest store. So plenty of supplies there for you. And probably an even better way to look at it here in time-saving stock check. There's your whole crop silage, 150,000 litres, almost a million litres of straw. There's the maize silage there, it's only showing 68 because it doesn't measure the silage tubes or the uh, harvest store. We've got our million litres of grace, grass silage and 120,000 litres there of clover hay. Pop down and have a look in the corn silage, there is 68,000 already converted to maize and we managed to top all of the trailers back into that and have 1.5 million litres there to process as well. So almost 1.6 million litres once all is said and done. Now you would have noticed as well looking on that there is 220,000 litres of wheat sitting here in the bins and a little bit of oats left over from last season. And that wheat, when sold at max price, we get just over $100,000. So that would be a nice boost to the bank account. So moving on from the feed supplies, let's take a look here at the animal setup. There's a capacity for 6,000 head of cattle in the feedlot alone. There's six of the placeable feedlots and 1,000 head per feedlot. So plenty of space in there to raise a whole lot of cattle. Over in the tie stall there is space for another thousand cattle and of course we do have some cows in there and we'll just take a look at what we do have. So you can see there 150 animals, they're all healthy, they all have food, they're producing milk and there is a million litres of slurry there so plenty to keep going. On average there's about $60,000 comes in per calendar day of milk from the milk sales so uh, very very big earners. The other thing to look at and the other bonus we take a look here at the health and reproduction, the Holsteins here, they are only a month away from reproducing, the Brown Swiss are only a couple of months away from reproducing, so there's potentially another 100 head of cattle to come through that. Of course these Holsteins have recently reproduced, sitting there at 43 months old. And then add to that the other cattle over at the other pen, 
got some there eight, nine, ten months old, and they are getting up there on puberty, which will take them towards the milk producing age, which would be fantastic. These Holsteins are the youngest. So it's 200 head there of dairy cattle, which will come through in time to produce milk for you as well. What about the land you own? Well, there is the main plot of land where the main yard is in 140. There's the field out the back, 141. The field we mowed today, 142. It's the three fields over the road, 85, 86, and 87. We still do own field 125 up there, which is half clover, half cattle pasture, but that has a value of $114,000. So it could quite easily be sold, and that money be used towards something a little bit more productive. Down the bottom here, 172 as well, where the clover is and also the young cattle, where they are fed and growing before they need to be brought back here into the main yard. So plenty of work for someone who wants to take on the farm and carry it on. Then we've got the grass here growing. This will just about be ready to mow next month, so you'll get a late cut in that in October. The field down the back, which had some wheat in it, that's all ready to be prepared for a new crop in spring. Can probably put some slurry on it. Obviously the field over there we've just mown. And then there's the two fields or three fields over the road. One had the wheat and the other two had the maize in, which could again have some slurry applied. Be prepared for planting in spring with whatever crops you might want to use come that time. Well there we go, that is the end of the Canadian cattle farmer here in Chilliwack, British Columbia. This has been a fun series. We set out to create a big cattle farm and I think we've achieved it. We've got a lot of space there. We've managed a whole lot of cattle through making food, mixing food and keeping them happy and healthy and it's become a very very productive little empire. From what was just a house and a couple of barns with the silo there in front of us to what we see now with the sheds, the hay stores, the feedlots, the silage bunkers, everything that's here, it was a fun map to build on, it was a fun farm to make and I've really really enjoyed it. Now, there is just one more thing I need to do before we go. And that is to pay off the remaining balance of the $632,162. Put that into there, make a special repayment, and the loan is gone. That is a rather satisfying way to conclude the series here. Still leaving you with $354,000, a well set out, well established farm and hopefully one that some of you will take on and make your own. I'm looking forward to seeing screenshots in Discord, do share away, I want to see how you move the farm, how you develop the farm and how things progress for you. But that's it for me, like I said, you're not getting the pick up, it's mine and we are out of here. So from the Canadian cattle farmer here in Chilliwack, British Columbia. It's a fond farewell and we'll see you wherever our next adventure takes us.